Hello and welcome back to EastEnders Weekly, your weekly podcast all about The Handmaid's Tale. <gasps> she got caught. She got found. She was on the plane. It's very tragic. Spoilers alert. <laughs> no, we're not talking about The Handmaid's Tale. Oh. Sorry, everyone. It's like far more severe. We only talk about EastEnders on this show. Oh, hence the name. Mm, funny that. Every week. <laughs> so yes, quite a fun week this week. An exciting interview from The Sun, which we'll be talking about later. Yeah, we weren't interviewed. Exclusive. By The Sun. <laughs> However, an interview that was released by The Sun. Yes. We'll be on, dissecting it. Online, yes. Mm. We'll, we'll be talking about a bit later on all things EastEnders. I mean, this week was a week of many birthdays, I felt. Well, including last week's. But Robbie had a birthday last week. If you include, if you do it Friday to Friday. Yeah, Sharon yeah. had a birthday. Bex had a birthday. Yeah. Must be month. something. Obviously, nine months ago, like, is when they do big secret storylines. So, well, something in the water when they have their yeah. have their um conception. <laughs> I loved the reference. I know it's not about anything at the moment, but I loved Big Mo's reference about her being midwife to Bex. That was nice. Nice <laughs> yes. touch. Yes, that was nice, wasn't it? And Doc seemed really like, oh, confused know, by it. Really. But again, more spoilers. I know. That's for later. I'm keeping everyone titillized. <laughs> Sounds like something Dot would say. Oh, what I say. Yeah, what was... Anyway, I was going to say what was Robbie fingering, but we'll talk about that later. That's not coming up yet. My God, we've really built the show this week, haven't we? <laughs> There's so much to look forward to. Should I have we... so many questions. Well, should we start at the beginning, where everyone wants to start? And okay. that's the ongoing saga, that is... Mm, Sharon Gate 2.0. Shianu. The sequel. It has many names. Hashtag Shianu, yeah. Yeah. Biggest bimbo in the square. Old trollop. Past the sale by date. They're just a few... Old enough to be your grand. <laughs> They're just some of the kindest words people have said about Sharon this week. <laughs> I love when um, Louise said, you're old enough to be her grand and was laughing at her. And she was like, well, her mum would have had to have him <laughs> when I was at school. Yeah. And she was like trying to explain it and make it sound it okay. <laughs> Which made her look even more uh, oh, yeah, suspicious really funny. about the whole thing she's <laughs> been, been trying to tell Louise has not been happening. <laughs> I know. So we found out who the person texting was this week as well. So yeah. lots of things came out and in. <laughs> so God's sake. That's what? Just... Came out and in. You know very well what you, you're insinuating. Sir. No, they're all going in and out of the alleyway. Uh, again, that's not the nice thing to talk about Sharon. <laughs> What's happened? I don't know. What's actually happened? Because it's, to it's us? so exciting. There's so many reveals well, this week. Yeah. So let's just Monday we had the first birthday, which was Sharon's. Not Sharon's first birthday. No, but, but the first birthday of the week. Of the week. Slightly more popular than Robbie's. Yeah, I there was say. a bit of a turnout. Some of the market traders actually decided to turn mm. out for Sharon's. But then Sharon has been there for longer. I know. She's been there from the beginning. I mean, no one really turned up. It was a 50th as well, like a special one. It was quite popular. I think it was quite busy. Well, Calvin didn't pop over, did he? No, nor did, his, nor did her or dad. Or Punk Mary. Or her dad. What, Den? No, her real Oh, dad. Gavin, Gavin, yeah. Gavin, Gavin didn't, didn't send anything, a watch or something. No, but someone who did send a watch, and that was Phil. Mm. Way too big for her, though. I think it was I think it was meant to be like a charm bracelet <laughs> style watch. I think Louise was flattered that she thought that she picked it for her. She said, oh, no, no, it wasn't me. No, dad. My, my, my dad's so great, he picked it himself, picked Sharon, himself. and you're cheating on him. I That's reckon... what her little dig was i reckon phil basically opened up an argos catalogue kind of closed his eyes put his finger down <laughs> circled it sent a picture to louise and told him told her to go and get it down the local <laughs> argos catalogue shop mm. it wouldn't surprise me no. That's the, because phil showed a kind of weird side this week or we were led to believe that phil was a bit more affectionate a bit more caring was was worried about sharon yeah because well, last week it ended on him phoning her and obviously we were like <gasps> He knows. Yeah. But um, no, he was just in a good mood. Mm, just he was happy for once. Well, he was saying he was having, he was gloating about all the fun he was having out in, uh, is it Portugal or Spain? I want to get this right. Somewhere Spain, warm. Spain, I'm going to go with. Somewhere warm, where where she, where she he's doing business. Business, we yeah. still have no idea no. of what he's up to. I don't think we'll ever find out. No. But obviously, Sharon's been up to her own business. <laughs> um, and uh, it's beginning to get known by more than just... The blackmailer on the square. Well, we said this a few weeks ago. She's, they're not being very careful. And this goes to show how uncareful they're being. Yeah. Even when they're found out, they're not being careful. No. Basically, Sharon goes and ducks out from the party, saying that she just wants <laughs> to have a private word with Phil. Goes into the alleyway. Some things I'd rather say in private. Yes. <laughs> goes into the alleyway. Keanu notices she's ducked out of the alleyway and... Has a present he wants to give her for her birthday. <laughs> yes. 
wrapped up in a bow. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean you put a bow? Well, on mind. it. No, <laughs> no. In fact, to be fair, I don't think they got up to. No, they didn't because Karen was. They just kissed. And yeah, and Karen left the pub, told Kat that there's free food and drink in the Queen Vic. Mm. Um, starts walking down the lane with her free slice of cake and turns around. Mm, and she's very jolly, isn't she? Well, she's she's getting moment. free she's getting alcohol free food, and food. Yeah. That's all she cares about. I mean, Ted didn't turn up. No, Patrick did. <laughs> yeah. If Ted, Ted's not there, Patrick's there. Patrick's not there, Ted's there. Yeah, but Ted turns up to anything with free food. He loves a buffet. He might be asleep. We know he loves it. It's in the middle of the day. Also, sorry, so I'm going. we're going off track of the story here, but... Throughout this week, they kept saying about, oh, you can't have cake for, you know, have some of the birthday cake for breakfast. Or Karen walked out with a, which was a slice of cake. But the cake I saw on the table was one of those tiered cakes, which has lots of individual cupcakes on it. So were they cutting the cupcakes like into two <laughs> so people could each have? Like, no, Sharon, she probably had like three cakes. But it wasn't Sharon who organised it. It was Linda who organised it. Yeah, it was probably it. Sharon's bill or Phil's mm. bill. But that's another... Surely Sharon could have had the consideration of asking Linda, how's Mick? Have you spoken to Mick? <laughs> I know. Anything no happened mention of recently? Him. This big murder case that Mick's been <laughs> thrown in jail for recently? I mean, what's Richie doing? Is well, he what is top Richie? dog in prison? How's Fingers Fingers? <laughs> have more beans that's been a lot stolen? Of questions. Yeah. yeah. But we don't know. Have more kettles been boiled? We thought this whole prison thing was going to be a big storyline. Well, I thought they were going to just keep it tubbing yeah. along throughout. Like every now and then we're going to dip our toe mm. into it. But no, obviously yeah, not. Three weeks. It's been forgotten entirely. And I don't think there's any sign of it coming back either. Really. No, not re- not up, not even past Halloween. Mm. I know that um, Linda has decided to wipe her hands clean of Mick. But at the same time, surely... She- it's still good. No, we still need a little bit. Even if Linda, yeah, even if Linda said, "Oh, I don't care. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I've got a plan. <laughs> but I can't tell you. Yeah. I'm doing something with Stuart because she didn't even seem that sad or anything. No, she was quite happy, wasn't she? Yeah, Getting along. she likes it. Mm. So, anyway, you were talking about Karen taking her cake down the road. Yes, yeah, so Karen's walking down the road and she turns around and she sees down the pub alleyway that Keanu and Sharon are, are in each other's back alleys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've really been have you just been sat all week just piling up these little <laughs> innuendo they wrote themselves <laughs> yes and she catches the mm, that was good her mouth was just wide open in shock she was aghast at the bimbo blonde bottle blonde tramp mm. town bike of the square oldest swinger in town <laughs> And she wants to confront the oldest swinger in town, but not before she's spoken to Keanu about it. And Keanu basically openly admits that they've been together for two months and he likes her. So this is the first time where you're let into it's not an affair for Sharon or Keanu. It actually Mm. seems to be something they're both into. They seem to quite like each other. Yes, unplanned, but Mm. he has seems to have fallen for her. It's Mm. different with her. She's not just some trollop. No, and her for him as well because um, she, later on in the week, Karen confronts Sharon and she says, you know, you can just toss him away when you're done. He, he's got he's all go- sorts of ideas in his head. He's got all sorts of ideas in his head. He's going to get really hurt if Phil finds out. And Sharon seemed quite quite genuine with the way she reacted with, I would never want to hurt him. Mm. I, I don't want to upset him. This is So I think it means more to Sharon and Keanu than at first we were led to believe and also they were led to believe. We always thought this was just going to be some seedy summer, silly summer story. crush if you look a few episodes back. Yeah. That's what we thought. Yeah. Um, but no, they seem to genuinely care for each other. We had a mini storyline with Jay, which was nice. He's getting involved in it. Well, he just wants his um, car fix that we can... <laughs> so basically when he's driving along, it jumps. He's afraid like someone's going to jump out the coffin or something. <laughs> he's like driving along. But it was nice because he sort of... He had like this slightly weird conversation with Keanu where he was like oh we all know you fancy her we've all seen the signs and I wouldn't have noticed if Kim didn't say but she's family so I don't fancy her and you're sitting there thinking oh god he knows about Sharon and Keanu as well but he says oh she asked me for your number a few weeks ago and that's when Keanu sort of probably the most clever Keanu has ever been mm, I would say like ever man, wasn't it yeah. um he was like hmm someone asked for my number did they so um yeah, we find out who the texter, secret texter is because he gets a number and then they show Louise and they pan past her fingernails, which she's just had done. So, yes. you know, it's her. So you find out Louise is the one that's been texting all this time, yes. acting all nice in front of Sharon. It wasn't really a surprise, was it? I think most people believed it to mm. be Louise. I, I wanted it not to be Louise just because it was so obvious it was Louise and it would have been nice. 
mm. if it hadn't have been. But yes, as you say, Jay said that he'd noticed he'd been walking in and out of Sharon's house. And because it kind of started with, like I say, Jay wanting the car fixed. And Keanu said he doesn't want to step on Phil's patch. Um, mm. Because if Phil finds out, then he's going to get really upset and angry. And so Jay just has a little quiet word in his ear. Um, I don't know how they wrapped that up between them. Because I believe, I guess Jay still thinks that he Keanu fancies, yeah, and Louis. Louise are an item or something. I guess so. Um, unless... Keanu had told him otherwise. Yeah, maybe Keanu just said, oh, no, that's not true. Maybe mm. she just fancies me. Maybe he said something like that. Maybe. So Keanu um, confirms his presumptions by uh, phoning up the phone while she- Louise is in the mm. square. And it rings. And then he hangs up. And it hangs up at the same time. <laughs> so he knows it's Louise now. He's confirmed it for himself. I loved... I really enjoyed this storyline this week with the Louise confrontation. <laughs> it was really fun. Because, obviously, he um, stole her phone from the bag by f- kicking a football near her. Yeah, near her head. <laughs> He's like, oh, over it. Donk. And it, yeah, and it then... did get quite close to yeah. her. I, felt, I, I can see why Louise would be... Well, she's angry with Keanu anyway, but I can see where her temper would maybe... And it's. Stand. I find it interesting that Louise hasn't confided in Bex about it. Because Bex comes over, she's like, oh... Um, she's like, well, what, what's your problem with Keanu? She's like, oh, nothing, nothing. So that goes to show that she's not told Bex what what's happened but well, she's organizing bex's uh, birthday party yeah with the girls with the girls because they they don't want to they don't want to party at the community center which sonia was trying to <laughs> organize uh is this you've already told you've already told you my haven't you yeah of course i have mm. and that was the last we saw of sonia as well that that week yeah. so I've, i'm presuming sonia's upstairs crying because her baby <laughs> girl is, place. yeah she's gone her baby girl's grown all grown up mm. so keanu has the phone in hand now so he has proof that it's louise so he goes to take it to sharon yeah shows, queen sharon shows sharon the boss. phones it shows in the shows her the text messages she believes him and they agree together mutually that sharon should be the one who confronts louise about hmm. i'm assuming off screen they both planned this whole all the lies beforehand like the personal training lies <laughs> and planned it with karen I'm or do you think sure. they were just lucky and they were karen was just clever enough to not admit it the same as how Sharon. Well, uh, to be honest with you, I don't. Uh, Karen, I don't think no. He, she's definitely not conspired with Karen, and um, whether she's conspired with Keanu is also questionable. Because mm. when Louise did turn up at Keanu, yeah, Keanu he didn't bit... say anything. He no. just stood. Sat, stood he also he looked uh, at her with no expression what to, mm. whatsoever. Didn't so... want to give anything away because he wasn't sure. Exactly. What Sharon said. And, but, but Karen stepped in a bit earlier. But yeah, the Thank accusations, God. the accus- or the the lies that Sharon had uh, <laughs> given over to. I loved them. Yeah, had given over to. I Louise. mean, thinking on your feet. I mean, Sharon is an expert. I mean, I don't, yeah, she is. I mean, Sharon's had to do it before, hasn't she? <laughs> She's been in a similar situation in the past, as yeah. hence why this is Sharon Gates 2. <laughs> she kept her cool. Yeah. She, so she said that she wanted Keanu to turn the garage around, that it wasn't making a lot of money, and she thought that if she got Keanu back in, he would turn the profit around. And it's already working. Mm. God knows how know. she's going to fudge those figures. But... Yeah. He's not even been working. No, yet. so that, that's what's another thing. And then, well, what about the voicemail? We all cry. Mm. And uh, Sharon... she lies her way out of everything. And then yeah. Louise is like, well, you're forgetting something, aren't you? Mm. This dirty voicemail that everyone mm. loves to listen to. And so she plays, the, they, she plays the voicemail in front of Louise in a really uncomfortable scene. And you can tell that Sharon feels bad that she's having to put Louise in this, un- in this uncomfortable situation. Yeah, this... she like makes her listen. She's like, okay, we'll, we'll listen to it. It's not what mm. you think it is. Yeah. And she's, <laughs> she says... I didn't want to tell you this because Phil would be so angry. Yeah. But he's been training me. Yeah. He's giving me personal training because... We're, we're not all young forever. <laughs> it's not easy. It's easy for you. You can just eat what you like and you burn it off. But some of us have to really try hard. <laughs> and I mean, when she said that and then they started playing the voicemail, um, I was trying to put it in context in my own head. <laughs> And it still doesn't really sound like it's like when she goes, "Do you do this for all the clients? Only the was it only the special ones like that?" And she goes, "Ah!" And she yeah. starts doing her manic laughter. Um, I mean, yeah, she might have been in a deep squat. <laughs> she was on a <laughs> God. This is she might be doing a lunge. Mm. She, she might be doing a deadlift. She might, yeah, she might have been um, <laughs> rowing. She's lifting, been doing all sorts lifting, of those noises. Lifting a dumbbell, um, I guess so. But she, she. It still, to me, didn't sound like... I mean, it, I suppose it could feasibly... I suppose she is a bit out of shape and that was... <laughs> she did. She explained it away by saying, I'm very out of shape, so I was very out of breath. But Keanu sounded pretty... Like, I know he has to demonstrate it, but does he have to... <laughs> I don't know. I, did, I think it was... A, yeah. it did was, Louise believe her? That's the question. Well, Louise didn't. That's the point. And so then she went storming over to Keanu. But lucky for Keanu, she's got a mum. He's got a mum that mm, can... Thank God. Because yeah. he was about to reveal i think mm. if it was given like another 10 seconds well she karen 
bails Keanu out big time. Um, but she says to Keanu afterwards that she didn't do it for Sharon. She did it for him. Because she's protecting him because she knows what Phil Mitchell can do. Um, and again, she reinforces that when she visits Sharon again. And uh, this is when both Keanu and Sharon swear on quite important people in their lives. Yeah, that was interesting. Yes. I think this is going to bite Sharon back on the bum because she sweared on Dennis's yeah, life. Yeah, and she did like hesitate, but mm. still did. <laughs> I mean, she was quite, she, she, she was like, go, go ahead, get a Bible. <laughs> I'll do it on a Bible. No, yeah. no troubles. I've done it in court. That I've lied in court. not anything to her. But mm. yeah, Dennis is a very important mm. Um, and yeah, she swore on Dennis's life that nothing's going on. Yeah, and I, I do think, I really think that this is going to be something that comes back to Sharon. Something I think so it's going to happen to Dennis. To Dennis, and she's going to the whole time be going, "I knew it. It's because I lied. It's because I lied to Louise about mm. my affair with Keanu." Or when it all comes out, like Dennis will be like there to support his mum, and Louise will be like, "No, she swore on your life," and he'll get like upset or something, and she'll mm. lose Dennis as well, or maybe something like that. But yeah, yeah I thought that was interesting. They 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 seem to linger on that for a little bit so it must have some meaning i hope yes well that's what i mean as you say because they lingered on it i think there is more to it than just a passing comment or just a another lie from sharon's mm. arsenal and um, it was also like the next day where she made she said oh louise haven't you got something else to say and she like made her apologize as well. yes <laughs> that was awful wasn't it so the next morning at breakfast <laughs> when sharon's eating a big oh, yeah. bacon sandwich as you can see i'm uh, not using Keanu anymore <laughs> No, clearly, um, she yeah she makes she makes Louise apologise to her. Mm. That's no, that is a bit co- you you think you would just, but she also plays Louise at her own game a little bit because then when Louise says oh oh please don't tell you're going to tell Dad about how I blackmailed you and this mm. and the other and Sharon was like well why shouldn't I yeah. it's like oh Sharon she no she's doing tut, tut. yeah she's playing she, a good game she knows how to manipulate. <laughs> Uh, very well. So she double bluffed Louise mm. in that situation. Because Louise does phone Phil the night before, but she nearly, she almost like wants to tell him, but then she doesn't. She's like, no, everything's fine. It's nice to hear your voice, even though we couldn't hear him, but. Well, he's busy, isn't fine. He? Getting ready for pantomime. But yeah, I thought that was a bit like, oh, Sharon, that's a bit um mean, making her apologise <laughs> when yeah. you know full well. <laughs> I mean, we, um... know, we know that Sharon can play the game if she wants to. When she stole the, the most recent mm. example, when she had the heist. Yeah, she stole the that's money. true. But Sharon does have a conscience, and I do think that Sharon... <laughs> She's slowly losing her conscience, isn't I she? Th- I yeah, but I think on this occasion, I think, especially where she was softened by Keanu, mm. because Ke- Keanu was always her, in this short space of time, was always her softer side. She was the... It was, yeah. it was Called softened. her beautiful. Yeah, and it's so- but it softened Sharon. Yeah, she, wasn't, she didn't have to be that hard mm. Mitchell woman, did Exactly. She? I got to also mention one of many references this week, a Michelle reference... Yes. About younger men. Younger men. Louise, Louise says. brought up, yes. So, yeah. Nice One of many references nice to this, hear this week. Back. Yeah, nice, nice to have her back. <laughs> I mean, do now Keanu... I mean, the, the week ended with Keanu and Sharon having one last kiss mm. and one last th- well, thing. Yes. But it was meant to just be a kiss. It was meant to be a kiss, but, you know, never. <laughs> when it starts as a kiss, it always ends on the kitchen table. Mm. And then we were both were like, oh, my God, no. Because she walked out into the kitchen and Dennis was there, like, with his hands, with his hands his over head. his ears. Yeah, yeah and it like, looked like oh. he was, like, blocking out the sound. <laughs> um, and, but luckily, of her workout. Yes, of her PT session. <laughs> but luckily, it was, it was only because he was trying to drown out the sound around him so he could listen to some television. Mm. His, he had his headphones. Perhaps on. iPlayer. Mm. Do you think? I'm surprised he didn't turn around and said, "Mom, shut up! I'm listening to BBC iPlayer." <laughs> <laughs> BBC loved to publicise in that way. <laughs> but mm. yes, yeah, so they've ended it as, that as was a close call. Yes, as Sharon put it, they've ended it in the right way. But I don't think Keanu's so sure, mm. and I think Keanu is proper infatuated. I mean, do you think Louise still doesn't believe her? Maybe she sets up a camera video evidence she can't talk her way out of it i mean i don't think louise 100 percent believes her no. and i think louise is is playing it so that'd playing. be interesting if she said yeah. something like that up i'd be more i'm more interested to know um how this is going to affect keanu envelop him a little bit and make him become more of a angrier character because he can't have the one person he's <laughs> he even said that sharon was not you know the one yeah because karen was sort of making fun of not making fun of him but almost making light of it because mm. she said oh you need to get out of the house and she was in her 80s tracksuit and stuff yeah, and yeah. things like that and she well, he, was, he, she, she was, was all... tr- she was trying to distract him wasn't yeah she? but there was a scene when they're at home and she he sort of opened up to her and said actually no it's not just that it mm. means more to me and she seemed quite like shocked yeah and surprised by it so yeah it's gonna affect him i mean obviously phil is back soon but how long was he meant to be away for? Two months. Oh, so it's been two months. The, yeah. the affair pretty much started when he left. So 
yeah, he'll be back soon, and we'll we'll see where it goes mm. next. But I, 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 I yeah, I think this is going to. Cha- I don't think it's going to change Sharon very much, but I think this is going to affect Keanu, and ultimately, because he wants to also he wants to be friends with her. He said to her, "I want to, st- you know, I want us to stay friends on the square." Mm. And she and after again they had their last <laughs> trip down memory lane. Well, that's the before. trouble. Every time they walk past each other mm. that's going to happen and that's it? what Sharon said and so Sharon said we can't be friends <laughs> but so this this also makes the whole excuse that Sharon had given to Louise almost seem more fake because mm. if they're going to completely ignore each other but then I suppose Louise could see that if especially if Phil returns next week or the following week it would make better sense why they wouldn't talk to one another after the I mean he only just needs to go down to Ronnie's boxing gym and get some anger out Yes, maybe, maybe. Do you get his real dream of being a personal trainer maybe. and owning a gym. Yeah, yeah, but that's, <laughs> that's his the dream. He doesn't want to be a mechanic forever, no. even though he's not a mechanic, he's a taxi driver. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's something that Kate Oates could maybe work on. Oh. Because coming up next... <laughs> right. <laughs> we are off to the Wolford Gazette to dissect a uh, interview... Read all about it, scurrying through the offices of the Wolford Gazette, looking into a big new story of the week. Yes, it's that time again where we're at the Wolford Gazette and we finally get the chance to hear what Kate Oates plans for the future of the square. But before we go any further, Ben, there's hmm. something I'd just like to mention to our, to our listeners. And I know how much you love this part <laughs> of the show. So just a gentle reminder that the holiday season is on its way. And what better gift could you give your EastEnders loved ones, nor yourself, than a piece of our merch from our merch store, which is shop.spreadshirt.co.uk forward slash EastEnders Weekly Podcast. You will find an exclusive design drawn for us of the Queen Vic bust on clothing, bags, pillows, and lots more. So check it out from shop.spreadshirt.co.uk forward slash EastEnders Weekly Podcast and help us continue to make the show the best it can be for all of you listeners out mm. there. I had a thought. Next Halloween, we should do a bloody Queen Vic head bust. Ooh. The one that Den got hit on. Yeah. Halloween. Yeah, dripping with blood. <laughs> <laughs> with a quote of Den, you'll never get me out of this, Vic. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So hold on to your hats. <laughs> <laughs> hold on to your witch's hats. Yes. Um, so on mm. Friday. Exciting news article. Yes, on the Friday just passed, uh, Kate Oates was interviewed during the current Inside Soap Awards for The Sun Online. Can I Uh, interrupt you quickly? Of course. Thanks. This is already proving to me that she's going to be a good executive producer. Because she's done an interview already. Before she's even... Sean O'Connor took eight months to do his first interview. Oh, right. And then a month after he was fired. Oh, right. And John York's never really done one. So she's actually done a coming up interview which is really good good yeah, sign for me yeah i don't think she's ever shy of doing an interview in fact kate oates likes to plant the seeds early on doesn't she for, mm. what, for what she wants to do and she's also not uh, backwards with confrontation either like there's when she had her tenure on coronation street um a lot of people had her on the show saying she was ruining the soap there wasn't the comp there was no light and shade and she She's very quick to defend the work mm, she's done. She sticks to her decisions as well, it she seems does. like. So very exciting. Um, this was her first interview, which was discussing the plans of the show and how her and John York have been working together. And she also revealed her thoughts on the current cast and characters. Mm, with so, a smooth transition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to delve right into the article and we're going to start off how the article started off. And that's basically what she plans to do, what's going to be her big bang her big article her big uh, storyline mm. and uh, she says there is something that i'm thinking about that the audience could say is an issues led storyline character led with a long story arc if you're saying anything important you should really care about it so um what story do you think she was uh, in you know planting the seed well, of? yeah i mean obviously she's left it very open-ended because you know this isn't till like middle of the year next year that this is all going to be starting but yeah it's an interesting thing that she said an issue led storyline mm. um obviously in cory she had the male rape and the male suicide which was like a hot topic i suppose you could say at the time because a lot of men don't talk about things yeah in that respect and um so yeah it's kind of thinking what it could be i mean a few things maybe a child transitioning or trans 
rights is a hot topic at the moment. Yeah, I was thinking something, something like, that. like that. It's funny because we were only talking about it. We were watching there's a drama in the UK on at the moment called Butterfly. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's just a six part drama about uh, a child, 13 years old, who's mm. transitioning to become from from a boy into a girl. And we both said, I'm so surprised that Soap hasn't done something similar mm. to that yet. Um, it'd be interesting. It'd be yeah. great, actually, for a storyline like that. I mean, that. they've just recast Ricky. Maybe he's in Pokemon. Oh, maybe, maybe. I mean, that would be something that Jack would... Jack would Jack lose would, his nuts Yeah, over. he'd hate it. So yeah. that could be quite an interesting storyline. But then you'd need a partner for Jack. Mm. So maybe she'll bring back Sam. Could bring back Sam. But Get she also together. does mention, she actually does mention in the article that Mel has um going to have a big role in mm. the future. So again, maybe Mel and Jack Hunter? are going to get together. Something with Hunter? I don't, I, no, I doubt what the Hunter would be. <laughs> no, well, but like a, a dark story issue, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to remember when she was in Coronation Street, the big storyline, and we've mentioned it a few times on this podcast, is that Pat Phelan storyline where it was a huge mm, long story long arc. arc. And so would she do something like that? Like something that I suggested when we did the uh, October Extra, <laughs> which was Max going on this killing spree storyline. Oh, you yeah, your Hollyoaks storyline. My Hollyoaks storyline. Do you think that would be something she would maybe Yeah, think I mean, about? there's a quote in here where she says, I think it will be character led and the long term arc will be character led. But there's definitely an issue in there to discuss. So going back to what people kind of want from EastEnders is having that more character led involvement where characters are crossing over and things so it looks like it's going to be like it's not going to be a big stunt or anything it's going to be something that's in the home that's happening so whether she's going to bring some bills back because we want the bills and there's going to be something with cindy or cindy's kids or bobby Bobby could be the one transitioning could be anything i know we're obsessed with this transition storyline aren't we (laughs) oh yeah it's not necessarily that but it could be um so yeah maybe she's going to bring back the bills and something that bill house or you know that living room is so iconic yeah people used to always come into that living room and pass and go so maybe they'll she's gonna do something like that but the fact that it's character leg and it led and it's going to be long term mm. it's quite interesting it is i mean we uh we we tweeted actually when the article was released we asked for people's points of views um of the article and we got a reply from our, our good podcast friends and also our arch nemesis which is a uh, conversation street <laughs> um no we love them we really do great podcast <laughs> <laughs> If you're a fan of Conversa- uh, Coronation Street, we highly recommend you listen to Conversation Street. Um, but they tweeted to say, because uh, the main uh, headline was that it's going to be a dark storyline that scares even her. And mm. uh, they quite rightly reminded us that um, she has maybe said something like this before yes. um, when she had a time on Coronation Street and even her time on Emmerdale. They tweeted to say, mm. a dark storyline that scares her, eh? Now, where have we heard that before? <laughs> and then the scratchy chin emoji, which mm. they, they've got a fair point to mention. Um, we also got a comment. I posted it on Reddit as well. And um, bystander1981 said, this is tantalizing. What could be that scary? If it's issues led, could it be the Me Too, domestic violence, more gang or knife crime, sex trafficking with Tiff and Jagger? So yeah, there's a few interesting issues that could be on there yeah interesting again tiffany is mentioned in the article because she mentions about the plans for existing characters and it looks as though it's an indication in the article that she's not planning to shake up the cast very much at all in fact she's going to be using what she has and expanding on it Mm. which she's known for doing again in the past um in concerning tiffany she was quoted as saying we've got some good stuff for tiffany with her having taken herself into a dark world so obviously yeah, I mean, Dan... some of these quotes which she's talking about, I'm not sure if she's still talking about John York's stories, like ending them off. Like the Mel one, she says in the new year, Mel has something to really flex her muscles, like Tamsin mm. Alfwaite's acting skills. Right. Where I'm wondering is whether she's kind of talking about wrapping up John York's storylines, because she says her stuff doesn't start till February. And she's also says she's taking a step back, um, or she's not taking a step back, but she's she's telling, acknowledging that this Christmas isn't my Christmas. This mm. isn't my Christmas to be rewarded for. So this is the last John York Christmas. But she she says that um, that during the transition period with York, um, I had lots of chats with John. He and I got together and had some drinks and some meals and some conversations. So she's obviously been doing her research and watching mm. a lot of the soap and talking to John York about the time together. I would love to go into the office because she says they're putting up all the storyboards on the walls. I would mm. just love to be in there now because obviously they're throwing around ideas. Nothing's set in stone. But I'd love to see like a few things that are written up. Yeah. I just wondered what 
what things they're throwing around. To be a really fly on the wall in that script yeah. writing room or the storyline room would be yeah. fascinating. Because they'll be right plotting now. out like two years worth, won't they, on like a chart mm. on the wall. Yeah. So, yeah, it is interesting. I mean, there's good news with the Carters. Good, great news for the Carters. Any fans of the Carters, um, she is planning to do absolutely nothing with them. Again, she's quote, uh, Kate Oates is quoted as saying... Well, oh, she'll give them storylines. Of but... course. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> as in, not move them out of the Vic. Uh, no. A lot of people want them to stay in the Vic, and it looks like they're going to stay. Um, I always wanted to see them tested, but that doesn't mean not seeing them in the Vic. I don't have any plans to shake them up, and that's with regards to the Carters. So, yeah, the Carters are staying in the Vic. Mm-hmm. But... Well, specifically Linda and Mick. Yeah, so, so would, do you think there'd be more then? Would there, will more Carters come out of the woodwork? Will that family expand? Mm-hmm. Do you think that's an indication to say that it's the Carters that are going to get the expansion? Um, because it always does tend to centralise around the Vic. There's a lot of them in the Vic, though. I would prefer it if maybe Shirley and Tina and Whitney and Halfway moved out into their own places well, their in own the. Flats. Yeah. But like more and, give, and that gives them a time to have their own stories, I think. Mm. But, the, but, but more family, maybe, with a car, perhaps. I don't know, it's but tricky, isn't it? Cause Mick's all... brother or Linda. Yeah, but they've sister. done that with Halfway, like, and Stuart, like this mm. friend that's been friends for like 20 years, but yeah. you've never seen him. It's a bit difficult to write stuff like that. It's a bit like my family, isn't it? When like cousins turn up and <laughs> things. A, but... lo- a lot of people um, have said about Stuart's daughter, because th- that's kind Zara. of... Zara. Mm. There's, n- there's not been any definitive line underneath her story. No. So there's there's time for her to come back. I mean, we don't know what's happening with the Stuart storyline. There's a lot of things you could throw in the air and say that's going to happen. Mm. Um, but do you think Zara might be someone who'd be introduced as a full-time character? Because a lot of people liked yeah, her. Yeah, there was loads this year of like two-week characters, wasn't there? There's been a lot of them guest characters this year. Mm. So maybe they were just testing the water with a few right. and bringing some in. But yeah, Zoe's... Um, Zara's Zoe, great. <laughs> the million dollar woman. Yeah. Zara's great, but um whether she has legs to be on the square if Stuart's gone too far to be a proper character. I mean, know. there's also been a lot of issues that people have brought out saying that there's a huge lack of diversity in the soap. Mm. Um, especially in the LGBT community. When she was questioned about this, uh Kate Oates said, I have a, res- a reasonable track record about that, and diversity is definitely high on my list. So could There'd be a gay yeah, bring character. Bring back Ben. Bring him back with a Spanish or French husband or something. He's in there, isn't he? Spain or France. He's travelling at the moment. Didn't Johnny have a an Italian boyfriend? Yeah, that did... disappeared, didn't it? Yeah, but we don't but... want to do that old story again. Like yeah, they but come over to bring England, back they Ben because English. it brings back a Mitchell and then he can also have a partner. And then they could bring in like a Spanish family to come along. <laughs> <laughs> something what, like that what an open the restaurant from the yeah, argy bargy a yeah. spanish restaurant a, what, a tapas yeah that'd be lovely um but the div- diversity is a massive issue especially while watching classic eastenders and like the cast is so diverse mm. and it's amazing and they talk about different religions and different cultures and how different families react to different things it's yeah. really good and like that's in 80 you know 1986 and it seems more current than the um current East End but enders. Pe- I mean, not just the LGBT community, but no. there is a huge lack of diversity in the soap. Let's be honest. There's, mm. there's It's like the only Indian family is a Masood. Yeah. And yeah. they're all just Masoods. But where are the Eastern Europeans? Yeah. Like the Polish community mm. or, or the Russian community? And yeah, because we had that one Polish guy like a few years ago who was trying to flirt with Shirley, but he was just oh, that one yeah. guy and he was just doing jobs on the cheap. And it was like... He was just two-dimensional, wasn't he? But... I mean, he, he was obviously meant to be introduced and it just I think he fell out, out to the wayside at the same time as the executive producer at yeah. the time, unfortunately. I mean, going back to like the cast that they have already, as I said, Kate's not showing any signs of really doing a mass cull. Mm. <laughs> I, I know, much to your disappointment. Going um... off this article a little bit, there was an interview um, on YouTube with, it was online, yeah. With, with, Dean, uh, with Dean, Dean Gaffney. Gaffney. Uh, and Dean <laughs> Gaffney was interviewed by uh, Digital Spy. And he was yes. asked whether Kate Oates, he's spoken to Kate Oates. And he said, yes, I've spoken to Kate Oates. And they asked him, oh, is your job safe? Kind of tongue in cheek. And uh, he replied, oh, yes, I'm on a, I've got a contract. Yeah, and... I've still got some time on my contract. I've so still I'm got okay. some time on my it's contract. Like, oh. I know. So, but... Worst news. Ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm thinking that Kate, I don't think Kate, this is something Kate Oates does, though. She doesn't no. get rid of, she introduces. And budget allowing i presume that she's going to maybe bring in more cast members because dean gaffney said someone's coming back at christmas Mm. um but he didn't say obviously that's got nothing to do with kate oaks 
And like quite a few people were like, oh, I hope it's Janine. Or, and I was like, no, I, I'd rather Janine come back under Kate Oak's storyline. Absolutely. Like, I don't know. I don't know who's coming back at Christmas. But do you think Kate Oates and John York, I know Kate Oates has stood back and said, put her hands up and said, this Christmas isn't my th- this year. But do you think she has a little bit of influence? Do you think she's spoken to John York? Not over the story. Like maybe no. how it's edited, something like that, or mm. promo, but I wouldn't think anything else no i mean at eastenders fan 21 on twitter said it would be interesting to see her put on the current stories too so her interest her input on the current stories and as we've said before she's already said that she likes some of the current stories she talks mm. about the mitchells as well she says the phil keanu and sharon stuff is all very interesting she's mm. quoted as saying i find it interesting the quote she says about the slaters because she's going through talking about like all the characters like oh we're giving towns and alpha this stuff and tiffany's got this great dark storyline mm. but yeah her one about the slaters was a bit I don't know. I don't know if I'm reading too much into it. I know what you're saying. When I read it first time, it seemed a little bit dismissive of the Slaters. Yeah, she says the Slaters are a really vibrant precinct and they're just as lively as ever. So, yeah. And it's like, mm. okay, is that... It's a, very it's a bit worrying quote. for the Slaters, yeah. if I were them. Because she's not, she doesn't say they're excited. Well, she does say they're Or excited. something coming up. Yeah. Or, yeah, it's a bit like, yeah, they're there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's interesting. Very interesting. And obviously, Alfie's coming back shortly. We still don't know if it's full-time or part-time. I'm hoping part-time. No. And I hope it ends Cat and Alfie. And that sort of frees Cat up a bit for the future. I must have say, I must agree. I'm, I'm getting a bit tired of Cat and Alfie, will mm. they, won't they? Um, and I used to love Alfie. When Alfie was first in it, it was like that breath of fresh air that the show needed. Yeah. And like slowly, he's just become worse and worse and worse. So, yeah, I'm ready for Alfie's arc to kind of be ended and open up a bit more for cat in the future i think i mean yes but that's uh, just my opinion kate i have to say i've been enjoying the slaters uh Mm, this time around um but because they introduced so many so quickly it's difficult unless they were going to turn it into because a lot of people criticize that obviously the carters seem to get a lot of the stories and but if because there's so many slaters other than when they're doing a storyline when they're, all the sisters are together and they're ganging up on Sonia or something mm. like that, it's very difficult for them all to get an individual storyline. Yeah. And I mean, Big Mo, come on. I mean, I mean you, you have Bring to. Bring her kids in it. She, I'd love to see her try to be motherly because like, she's so anti like caring about anyone else. I'd love to see what that would be like. But where would they fit in the blooming house? Well, they, no, they, yeah, they need to separate the house up again and some need to move out. Mm, I, yeah, but, but it is Martin's house, so in theory, Martin and Stacey should oh, yeah, be Martin the ones and who Stacey stay can there. stay. Yeah, they should stay there. Uh, or, or Martin could finally get uh, where he is sleeping, he, uh, sleeping, staying. Uh, I know the house. rightful heir to his house. <laughs> when he is <laughs> now that he's divorced, Sonia. Sonia, exactly. He should... could to test the will, couldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no mention of the bills in this interview, which is interesting. I'm still mm. waiting for Kathy to get a storyline. Yeah. It'd be lovely if um, holding out hope. It would be lovely if Kate Ota said, and I'm gonna give Kathy a huge story arc. <laughs> like, Yay! Um and the final thing of the um article, which I think is quite interesting and exciting, is about the tagline. Everyone's talking about it. Yeah, the Sun newspaper suggested that Kate Oates has a knack of attracting a conversation over stories and sometimes pushes the envelope. And Kate Oates reacted with, it's more about making sure the old tagline of EastEnders, everyone's talking about it. And that's what we want to make sure is happening. So that's really exciting to hear. So she wants to make it appointment television yes, again. Which is yeah, what we've um, said on a few interviews that we've done on other podcasts. Make it appointment viewing. Mm. Obviously, we live in a world where you can just download it from iPlayer. Or yeah, you but can... there's something about like when they did the live week, mm. you had to tune in. You had to like talk on Facebook or Twitter at the time. Mm. And it like that little live logo came up in the corner and it did get people on there talking about it and they have to watch it live. Yeah. In case someone says, where's Adam? You've got to tweet it. But do you think that her <laughs> stories, when she, when her stories do eventually become in the soap, so from February when Kate Oates has taken the full reins of the soap, mm-hmm. do you think she's going to have that kind of impact where it's boom, 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 story, story, story? And also that, that lots of, because there's lots of interaction in the soap. Kate mentions that when she takes on a role um, of an, as an executive producer, that she always likes to leave it in a position where it can be picked up again by a safe pair of hands mm. after her. And she mentions that in the interview as well. So she's already kind of saying, I've got my plans for what I want to do in the two week, two years. And after I've done that, 
I want to then leave. Or she says, if, I, if you can leave the story cupboard full of amazing things and they can run with their own brilliant way, I think that's what I should be doing. Mm. So she's already saying that she's kind of wants to pick up the reins give it a shake sort it out yeah and yeah. then let someone I mean, else it, take it over. shows how important doing something like that is like leaving it in good hands mm. because look how long it's taken just for john york to kind of sort out the mess that was left a year and a half ago so it's a good point when she takes over she wants to do a good job and she wants to leave it in a good position with good characters mm. with good history so when someone else does take over it's not a uh shambled mess like it no it, it, it's, it's a comfortable handover that mm. that person can then give so it their own input and yeah. but, but hold take the reins again safely because we have to remember that kate oates is the executive producer of a serial drama so she's not actually only doing eastenders she's doing holby city and casualty i mean the reason she's doing all three might be because of bbc budgets what you know she's used to working on itv with seemingly a higher budget maybe she's made a, con- a deal saying oh, I need to demand this much money, so I'll be in charge of all three, maybe. Mm, mm. Maybe something like that. But, but like you nothing's say, really been said, has yeah. it? She's giving her, she, as you say, she's giving her big time uh, with EastEnders. And it's very exciting, as we know, as, because she's already revealed that she started and she's basically, all you can see all of her stories from February. Yeah, that's when it all starts. Um, an interesting tweet we got, which um, from at Rob Inns 87 is that his hope is that EastEnders is going to tackle that dark real life issue of reincarnation and voodoo and that the Mitchell sisters will be back by March. <laughs> is that something that you're hoping for, Ronnie and Roxy return? Well, they're both being successful in theatre, I'm afraid, so mm. it's not looking hopeful. What about Abby? Yeah, Abby can come back. A bit of a rain dance around the square yeah. to get Abby. Aunt Babe's, they'll go to Aunt Babe for her curse magic. Yes. And they can bring Abby back. Fantastic. Lovely. <laughs> With a locket of her hair. <laughs> I mean, um, if you would like to join the conversation, uh, you can find the link to the article on our Twitter at EastEnders Week. Or, um, and you can also email us at EastEndersWeekly at gmail.com. Or you can join our group on Facebook facebook by searching eastenders weekly podcast um and do let us know what you think is going to happen from february next year is kate oates going to stick to her word and keep the carters in and expand on what is already there we'll have to wait and see hot off the press lovely and that was our little trip down to the wolf of gazette Well, there you go. Exciting things to come. Yes, let's hope so. Let's hope so. It sounds it sounds pretty optimistic, doesn't it? It does. Because now we're doing the smaller storylines. We week. are. We've got Carmel and Dot storylines coming up. So we're going to start with Carmel, who's still on like the end of her character arc now. They're sort of winding her down the past few weeks. And she keeps hinting that I might leave and go to Dubai or yeah. I might leave and go travelling in do knife crime talks so it, it, it's she's wrapping up all her characters yeah. stories with bex and keegan and everyone come in mind i either one or the other <laughs> but at the moment it's it's the other because she's thinking about carrying on with her talks with knife crime mm. um, and she's gone out and bought some more flyers <laughs> so the printers so they literally see her walking toward the printing shop they're rubbing their hands together oh here I she know. comes here she comes the woman who likes to find her flyers she's on her way <laughs> and they've all got a shiny finish as well so they're not cheap gloss yeah no, That's Matt, we've place. discussed this before. Matt is more expensive. No, Matt is cheaper because it surprised us because we prefer Matt. Oh, yes. God, what fun conversations God. we have while we... Keep record. up. Well, it's not about keeping up. It's it's lucky you're not on the um, continuity team on EastEnders, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> not that um, they have one, to be fair. <laughs> they do, actually. I follow him on Twitter. Oh, do you? Yeah. What's his name? I'm telling you. Okay. Well, in case <laughs> I follow him and get a job. <laughs> <laughs> it's a job in EastEnders where you have to know the history of things so everything is like makes sense. Do you reckon he keeps the uh, Wikipedia page up and going as well? He needs to. Yeah. He needs to get on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Carmel's done her first talk this week. Yes. On not, her own. Not too arousing success. No. Um, because there was a guy who, after she finished the talk, um, there was a guy there. Well, she didn't even get to finish it. He was like, she was like, oh, any questions? And he sort of... Singled Lewis. His, the guy's name was Lewis. She singled him out. Mm. She said, what about you? Anything wrong? Because he was looking all sheepish and quiet. Yeah. Like so he wanted also... to say something, but didn't. Yeah. But you could also see that he d- could, You maybe you could talk to him privately. You could have <laughs> taken him to... Well, if he would have come to you, maybe. Yeah. Said, oh, can we have a little... Well, this is her first time. She's new. 
Yeah, well, she first ruined day on the job. The first time she's ruined. <laughs> she always her ruins job. her job on the first day. Yeah. So she she singles Lewis out, and Lewis uh, gets a bit of mock a mockery from mm. some of the other people they in the throw crowd. Throw paper at him. Yeah, it's like being at school. Yeah, and he then basically goes storming out the community center, and um, Carmel follows him out, and he basically says to her like, "What you're doing is a waste of time. It's not going to achieve anything. What it is today, carry knives around with mm. you, um, and it's just what you have to do." Yeah, and he said they're all there just to show face that they care but no one does they're all making fun of slicing your boy and stuff so um mm. that makes her give up again she she falls out of love of it quick she's she wants to help but she doesn't know what to do does she yeah she's taking a step back she feels she's taking a bit of a step back with this and while she's basically the next day looking after arthur with kush because kush is on babysitting duties yeah number um, one dad oh absolutely um he is basically letting arthur draw all over the flyers Mm. And yeah and he's oh no mum these are your flowers she's like no no I, i've given up on that idea now <laughs> it's like oh come on you've just spent like five thousand pounds on printouts yeah over the space of a year she spent a heck of a mm. life hasn't she? she and then uh, that's when she starts talking to him and she's like i might go um as a focus on my family that are still around still here you and darius and i might go to dubai and visit him and kush is a bit surprised yeah but she thinks that she's giving up again and that she's not she knows she's got a an idea of what she wants to do. She wants people to be aware of this mm. knife crime, but she, she needs to make them see him. But she, yes, she needs to see, <laughs> she needs to make people see him, find a way. And Light this, bulb. Yeah, and this makes her realise what exactly she means by this. Mm. Um, and that is that she wants to basically make... Erect a huge poster. Yeah, a giant poster of Shaquille in the middle of the square um, <laughs> so people can see him. But also, it's, it's a good idea, to be fair, because it kind of puts... It humanises... face to the number. Yeah, yeah. it humanises the crime and, the, you know, it shows people exactly what, what she's trying to make people realise, and that is that this is a huge problem mm. um, and Shaquille is one of the outcomes of the problem. Mm. Um, puts a person to the statistics, which um, she feels is the only thing that people seem to talk about it's just the numbers and then they move on from the actual person yeah well it's, it's, it's soon forgotten isn't it it's like any hot topic it's it's mentioned for like a week and then sh- soon forgotten and moved on while this mm. this like poster, mick in prison storyline like, like mick in prison <laughs> or exactly. ruby yeah oh well ruby, but ruby was um ruby's off the square at the moment isn't she because she can't stand hanging no, around wolfie that's what stacy said she needed a... i can't stand her hanging around wolfie <laughs> she needed a break <laughs> She needed a break around Wolford for the time being. Yeah. But but Carmel, Carmel wanted to make her last hurrah to the square and let people know about Shaquille. Mm. And so off to the printer she goes. <laughs> yeah. <She's>, uh, <laughs> Lots of money, this one. She Big goes, printout. She goes storming back to the printer and says, right, I want this giant... It's not even A... What's the biggest size paper size you can get? Is mm. it like A0? A1? No, it was A0. A0, zero, zero. Zero. It was big. It was very big. Um, yeah, and she wants to warn everyone just in case it upsets them before it goes up. So she's warned quite a few people, not Bex though, because she's having a guitar lesson. <laughs> no, she, yes, she told Sonia to warn her, but as we know, Sonia is useless at passing <laughs> on any information. I mean, Sonia could... Sonia's never met a doctor before. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she hasn't. So, um, yeah, she's warned everyone but Bex, and of course it goes up early because Ian comes in and says, what you've done is really brave. Yes. Um, I've seen the poster outside my... <laughs> my bedroom window. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so that's what he has to wake up to every day now. Poor Ian. Oh yeah, to a giant Shaquille. It's like <laughs> a, it's a bit like the Teletubbies. You know, when the, yeah, sun, the sun comes sun. up and the baby's face is like looking over this hill. That's what Ian's going to get every mm. morning. Shaquille's face <laughs> looking at him through the window. <laughs> He'll never get a new wife, will he? What? Because Shaquille's watching. Yeah, it'll oh. put them all off. We don't want him to get a new it'll wife. Put Mel off. We want Jane back. Put Jane off. Jane won't care. I miss Jane. We all miss Jane. But do you know who else we miss? Shaquille. And do you know who misses Shaquille the most? Carmel. And Carmel mm. is made... And Kush and Bex. Yes. Well, Bex is getting over it, what? actually. What? <laughs> yes. Because... <laughs> she wants to move on. Well, she get on her birthday. I want a new storyline, please. <laughs> yes. On Bex's big birthday... Um, yes, 18 years. She gets something in the post. I mean, he planned this oh. last Christmas. I know. So... I did roll my eyes when this happened, because it reminded me of the stupid Joyce letters mm. from beyond the grave yeah the treasure hunt which was ridiculous because um beck says that he saw that we, w- we were watching tv and an advert came up and i just mentioned that i've always wanted to do that <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, yeah, it felt like, yeah, it's stupid. It felt a bit forced, and mm. it felt uh, and would it's you... like a week before he was dying, he was trying to go out and get girls around his house with alcohol, so yeah. he didn't care about Bex that much. And Bex didn't really care about no. him. Bex suddenly had this a sudden aff- affiliation with him, like just before his mm. death, and now she's making out that she's like he forced loved you him. to send nude pictures, Bex. Do you mm. forget that, did you? I know. So it did, it did feel it felt yeah, it felt a bit, a bit forced. forced, and it felt like it, it felt a bit lost it mm. was it was it didn't make much sense they should but... have spent last summer having them dating again well, looking on it now well they, they should, should have, have done a, a bit more of a build-up with their yeah. relationship to make it a bit more feel like to, to sympathize with bex more carmel gives bex uh a saint christopher necklace is saint christopher well, i couldn't work out what it was it it's was trying to make him not feel homesick well, it's one something. of those travellers it's the same t- t- oh, one of them yes yeah, so the same as what stuart gave dennis no it wasn't dennis halfway. he gave it to halfway yeah and dennis Oh, did he give it? Halfway to gave De- it back to him. Dennis, yes, halfway snubbed it <laughs> and then gave it to Dennis. <laughs> Goodness, Let's maybe Dennis gave it to Carmel. But yes, she gave that to Bex and said, "Oh no, you have it. We have loads of his stuff here, even yeah. his smelly socks." Oh, yeah, she's not washed them yet. No, she likes the smell of them, <laughs> doesn't she? She likes. Well, she she's organised his bedroom. I wonder if his bedroom's ever been used mm. since as well. So, what do you reckon? She's just kept it in the same state. Probably. It was. So, um, <laughs> it's as honoured as Bex is that she's been given this. You know, quite f- nice gift from Carmel. Mm. She's like, well, it's, I'm, I'm, I sound a bit of a bitch for saying this, <laughs> which you do, but um, I've kind of moved on now. And she wants to move forward, not backwards, and yeah, yeah. she wants to just remember him from what she had, I think, and yeah. not continually have this hanging over her and not think about the past. Mm. I mean, you know, she doesn't even want to go on the hot air balloon ride either. She doesn't. Which uh, and and also Bex's wise words. W- rang mm, true to resonate. dot Res- that's it resonated <laughs> to dot quite well which leads us quite nicely to the dot and dr leg story not yet line. though because there's a slight cliffhanger of um kush and kamau looking at the poster of course and then they walk off and they have that thing where it looks like someone's watching them and someone in a hood is looking at the poster mm, because- so i'm assuming that gets like ripped down or spray painted over or something they'll probably get drawn over or something yeah. but who buy i i've got my best it'll just on- be the gang no i don't i think it's keegan I think because when, when they are, yeah, when they were asking permission from Keegan to to have the poster up, Keegan didn't really show much emotion. Did no. he? He was just like, "Yeah, it's a good idea. Just mm, do it." So I think. Shame. But there is something coming up with Keegan next week, where the trailers it sort of in, it looks like he's going to stab someone. So there's something dark coming up next week. Oh, so Keegan. maybe it was one of the gang members who did it, and Keegan who wound. Keegan yeah, up maybe. Further. Yeah, so. maybe. We'll I mean, wait and see. We'll, we shall see. But yeah, Carmel, you quite right to mention that. It was also very excited because the uh, Wolford Gazette, somewhere we've just visited, wants to do run an article because it's Expose. really it's all over social media. Hashtag yeah. Shaquille. Hashtag Knife Crime. So we've got the lovely storyline of Doctor Leg and Dot. Yeah. Hello, Dot. Hello, he's very happy, Dot. isn't he? Well, for someone he dying, yeah. It. But he's enjoying life, isn't he? Yeah. And this is what ultimately Doctor Leg is trying to. To conceive to Dot, mm. trying to convince her in thinking that life is for living and basically you might as well, if you're told you've not got long left, don't try to prolong it and... And be ill, and yeah, be it's that thing, isn't Ill. it? Just enjoy Be your life for longer but be sick or be life for less but be able enjoy to enjoy Enjoy every it. minute, yeah. yeah. So a very tricky decision. It's different for everyone. Yeah. Um, but Dr. Leg, we meet him in the hospital he's at a hospital appointment and dot's worried so she wants to go join him yes she, she gets so, keanu's taxi well, service well, not keanu then <laughs> dot gets kenya <laughs> see i told you last week she says shaquille funny she said it again actually at the end of Friday's episode um shaquille shaquille or something Shaku like that or something. Shaku, yeah. something funny but yes kenya <laughs> kenya goes and gives her a lift to the hospital and it's as keen as kenya is to get away because at the same time as this is happening karen's just found out about him mm. and sharon yes he doesn't really want to be there he but really he's a good boy but he's a good boy there. and he stays and he hangs around um and dr leg is very happy that ken is staying there <laughs> for him as well i so, love that it was so funny so yeah ken and he doesn't correct him if he says yes sir <laughs> yeah i know he's sweet though you're ken ken you isn't he? yeah i love ken mm, i like ken too <laughs> ken you <Uanu. laughs> oh, poor ken and shakil shackle she shackle. calls him shackles weird. it's shackle, shackle. yeah shackle so because I, I remember thinking it was like handcuffs shackles yeah shackles shackles <laughs> sounds so. like a seaside town doesn't it shackles mm. and um that's when dr leg has his appointment and they say we can give you treatment it might shrink it but you've got pancreatic cancer which is uncurable um and dr leg basically says no i i don't want to have any more treatment and this sort of upsets dot because dot likes to get involved in 
other people. But she likes to get involved with other people's business. But I think Dot is genuinely quite sad. Also, that she feels like everything everyone she remembers her. is mm. yeah is, is dying and and leaving her. And so Dot starts to ignore Doctor Lex's phone calls. He's only got a few months left. She hasn't seen her in years. And now she's ignoring his calls. Well, this is exactly the same advice that shock horror Max Branning gives her. <sighs> so she. She basically. Oh, yeah, I didn't like these scenes because yeah. it had Max and Rainy. <laughs> like, she... why would Dot take advice from Rainy? Because she talked to Robbie and he brought up about um, Abby. Mm. I can't remember in what context, but yeah, I, I, I knew I knew you were very happy. Your eyes actually glistened know, over like Abby, a Japanese anime cartoon. Max um, seeked advice from America, wanted more than one opinion. That's right. And so Dot was like, I want to convince Doc- Dr. Leg to maybe get a second opinion. Mm. Perhaps someone else could cure his pancreatic cancer. Yeah, I understand all that. What I don't understand is why she'd take advice from Rainy. Like, Dot would never listen to someone like Rainy. Well, I thought Rainy's advice was quite sound, yeah, but Dot quite would, grounded. Dot would not listen to an ex-prostitute and an ex-addict. I don't know. No. I think Dot is quite... I think Dot is a, no. a much more open person than she <laughs> started to be. And I Okay. Because, well, she said herself in in one of the episodes, she says that um, the reason God created all these medicines was to help people get better. And so why would Dr. Leg ignore, again, the advice of, of God? Mm-hmm. So somehow Dot has linked modern medicine to the Bible. So <laughs> oh, yeah. maybe she, she kind of could forgive Rainy yeah, maybe. for her sins too. And don't forget Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. That's true. So, you know, maybe a she... Virgin. Mary Magdalene wasn't a virgin. Oh. His mother. Ma- oh, I don't know. I'm not... his, his mother Mary. I'm not up to date on the book. What the, the great the book. big book. The big book. The big B. You should give it a read one day. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I didn't enjoy the Max scene, so I sort of just skimmed over them. But yeah, that, she was kind of convinced Dot to accept Doctor Leg's decision, and Robbie helped a bit this week as well. Which... Well, no, Robbie put his foot in it first of all by <laughs> saying that uh, Doctor Leg didn't have long on this earth or something like that and um, even and he kind of muttered under his breath oh, i shouldn't have said that out loud it's like no robbie you shouldn't have <laughs> um i thought it was a shame that they had robbie in the scene when she was going through the photos and making a photo album would you, would you prefer sonia no i preferred martin actually is my preference because I... martin came in like two or three times and didn't even like say oh there's a picture of mum or anything well no martin came in later when they were drinking tea around the table and this is when mm. bex gave but the her photos were speech. still there he, when they were looking at the photos martin came in and said oh we know why bex is oh, upset right. so you think he thought picked... he could have said at least like oh there's a photo of mum well, you could have picked one up and said yeah. yeah yeah oh there's my dad yeah he doesn't seem to want to mention them he didn't want to talk to dr leg last week no martin's why? very troubled though you have to remember that the, a lot he's these... got a new face <laughs> True, but you have to remember a lot of these characters have a lot of trouble um, brewing in their minds. Martin's still got the whole Ruby. Well, Robbie's got, got nothing. <laughs> nothing that's why going Robbie's, on. Yeah, that's why Robbie's so happy because his mind is just cleared of any fog. He's got no troubles. Whatsoever. He doesn't give a damn about Donna anymore. Mm. But yeah, so the reason why Dot had all those photos out on that table was because she was planning to make a little photo album for Doctor Leg um, to kind of reminisce and remember the old times but mm. after beck's conversation and chat can i just stop you on the mm. photos please sorry of course go on because i also wanted to go through some of the photos that she had on the table all oh, right yes do so there was a photo of her and jim's wedding day oh, that's nice yeah there was a photo of dot and roly at dog show and he has loads of ribbons on him <laughs> So she's taken him to a dog show. That was one of his well, stories. Yeah. That was what one if of his story stories. Was <laughs> there was a photo of Dot and Nick when Robbie said, oh, who's this lovely young lady? And so she was like, that's me. I was beautiful once. That's a, yes, that's a, that was a publicity shot. Mm. They, that was with the one outside the laundrette with um, Ethel, Pauline and Dot. Yep, that was a publicity was shot there. too. Yeah. There was one of Dot, then Lou, Lou, Bill and Pauline all together. Lovely. And there was a photo that was obviously taken from an episode because it was inside the Bill house and Simon Wicks was on the sofa. Lou was there and Dr. Leg and Dot were in the lounge. So it was like a still from an episode what, which someone the, took a photo. The mid-conversation. Yeah. And then there was also a, a wedding photo of Dot's first wedding with Charlie when she was young. Oh, right. I presume that wasn't Charlie actually... Charlie Cotton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I presume that wasn't actually of June Brown. It no, was it was like a, like a photo. young photo of... They've merged them together, I a think. A photo they found. So, on. yeah, quite a few nice memories on that table. Do you think there was a few photos on there just to bulk it up of, like, they found, like, in a frame from, like, the, the uh, convenience store or something <laughs> like that? And they just said, oh, just throw that one in. Yeah. We'll just say that's a great aunt. I mean, I was, I was, it would have been funny if they had, like, a photo of old Martin. 
What, as a baby? No, like oh, well, the, the old actor. The, the old actor. <laughs> yeah. That would be funny. I'd, in, yeah. a funny in a way, I'd, I'd almost see it as a nice meta kind mm, of like moment touch. if they did something like that. Yeah, if they had like a you could, and they could, even if they made a comment, they'd say, cool, you really grew into your face or something like that. But I was happy nice. with this um, photo storyline because last, only last week's show I said, from this Dr. Leg storyline, I want an Ethel mention. Yes. And she had an Ethel mention and a Pauline mention. Yeah. So that's good. Lots of mentions this week. Yeah, of all the old cast. I'm going to bring up every reference from this week's, just so you know. I, well, I can tell. I've seen There's this. There's one to go. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> I look forward to it. I just, you shouldn't tell me it's a reference and see if I spot it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, but Dot has decided after looking at all those lovely photos and all those references that she doesn't want to look into the past. She wants to make new memories into the future for them to, uh, for Dr. Leg to go out in a glorious bow mm. and so she's without asking <laughs> i know Bex, she just she's decides to have them yeah so is she going to turn up at the so she has the hot air balloon tickets with dr leg or she's going to go on the hot air balloon <laughs> do you is think this she, safe yes are they both going to die one there? insurance do you think the hot air balloon people are going to be like oh so you're bex 18 <laughs> and you're shaquille and you're 17 you look quite old um so yeah insurance purposes is probably going to be a mm. bit of a tricky problem like they're both 93 Mm. So I don't know if he's going to make it up. If he gets up there, I don't think they're going to come. I down. think it's going to be. It's going to be. You're going to presume that he dies on that balloon trip. How do you think? Yeah, they'll do a shot. Where... I wonder how they, if they're going to film it like green screen. <laughs> no, do a drone and just have um have no because well, the actress actors won't go in a hot air balloon. Well, you can do. You can do. She but... wouldn't even go in a car on the motorway. That was green screen. Oh, was it? Remember? Well, you can do. You can do perspective. You can do perspective by like tilting a camera oh, upwards. Yeah, that's true. So it looks like they're in the air, <laughs> and then just have. Uh, and it would crack me up if it looks really bad. If they just have like two people who wearing like a dot cotton wig. Yeah, and like um stunt doubles. Stunt doubles <laughs> for dot. And can I just say, if anyone from the BBC is listening. I would like to play Dr. Leg as a stunt double. And ben would have already filmed it, I'm afraid. Not necessarily. They can refilm it. <laughs> ben would like to play Dot. Baby Abby stunt double. No, you play Dot <laughs> as the stunt double. You look good in a kind of perm. Yeah, I like her new wig, mm. so it's fine. There's a little curl at the front, two little so, curls. Yeah, I'm assuming next week we continue with the Dr. Leg hot air balloon storyline. Yes, watch this I space. can't wait for it. There's a few people on Twitter who were a bit worried that, um, <laughs> that Dot was going to seduce him. Yeah, in the mm. hot air balloon. No, um, they're both past that now. I mean, no I don't know what benefit that it would give Dr. Leg. So, um, two little stories, but they kind of linked together. Mm. Um, and it, they were, they, yeah, they were nice. Nice little sorbets for the they week. Were. They were fun. Well, the dot one was fun. Yeah. We're playing a game now, aren't we? Mm, my turn. Mm, yeah. And it's real difficult. <laughs> Right, it's that time again to work out the family tree of Walford <laughs> and see how well you know everyone's connections. The six degrees of separation. It is. So we are playing Slater Family Values, where I give you two characters, by your request, two current characters. <laughs> yeah. um, and you have to link them together within six steps. And I give you 30 seconds to do so. So today, I want you to link your favourite Max Branning mm. to Mick Carter. Don't really interact much. So let's see how you get on with this. In three, two, one, go. Okay. Uh, Max Branning is had an affair with uh, Fee Browning. Right. Uh, Fee Browning was the daughter of. 10 seconds. Was the daughter of Wilmot Brown. Uh, Wilmot Brown then tried to uh, con Shirley into giving the deeds to the pub. Shirley is the mother of Tina, and Tina is the sister of. No. Mi no? Tina's not her mother. You run out. Of, you've got 15 seconds. Oh, I've got more time. Oh, Tina. Well, Tina's related. Tina and Shirley know one another. I, right. just can't, I can't think of their link because I'm well, you under have pressure. To. It's six degrees oh, separation. Oh, goodness. Um, sister. Sisters. Sister, sister right. sisters. And so they. Uh, Time out. Oh. I think I normally give you 60 seconds, so I extended it halfway through. Um, but you still didn't get there. That was very traumatic listening to that. <sighs> Obviously, my plan worked because Mick 
and Max hardly ever cross storylines. Meet one another. I mean, if I had... If Do you I want to hear the correct think, answers? Well, let me just explain myself so the <sighs> listeners don't think okay. that I'm thick for not knowing the relationship mm-hmm. between Shirley and Tina. I don't get to explain myself on your games. I always let you explain yourself and then. I always give you a platform. Okay, go on then. Well, let me then. Go on I, then. Shush. Piers Morgan, hurry up. I always give you a platform to explain why you didn't do very well in a game. Um, and I think I deserve it this time around because normally I do very well at these <laughs> games. So um, under the pressure, I had forgotten that Shirley and Tina were related by being sisters. <laughs> and if you'd given me time, I would have known that. But no, mm. they can't be sisters. Shirley and Tina can't be sisters because... Yeah, they're sisters and Mick is Shirley's son. But they grew up believing they were all brothers and sisters. A bit like Zoe and Kat situation. Yeah, but Tina still calls Mick. Yeah, they're still cool. But Tina's actually his aunt. But they call each other sister and brother. Oh, see, this this is when things like this confuse me. <laughs> so you get you get confused on simple things like Fowlers and Bills. <laughs> fowlers and Bills are confusing. Yeah, and I get confused on family trees. Whenever you sh- present to me a family <laughs> tree, I'm always like, my head just explodes. I'm like that emoji. Well, you need to get onto um, Wolford Webb and look at that family I tree do, that they made. But like they I do. They are one of every single character was, ever made. Yes, but I was going to say, it's like the emoji with the head exploding. That's what happens mm. to me. So anyway, <laughs> the correct answers are... Well, not the correct answer. This is what I got. An answer. Max. Max's daughter is Abby. How could you forget Abby? Well, R.I.P. Abby. Well, we don't mention her in every episode anymore. I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it gets cut. Abby works with Aunt Babe at the Vic Kitchen. Right. Aunt Babe's nephew is Lee. That's right, nephew. <laughs> Lee was engaged to Whitney. And Whitney and Mick exchanged a kiss. Well, okay, fine. Mickney. But... Nickney. But my link would have made it if you'd just given me a time to... Just... I gave you 60 seconds. <laughs> I needed time no. to think. And that was Slater Family Values. That was grossly unfair. And as you heard from my explanation, <laughs> the reasons why... It wasn't unfair. That was terrible. I'll give you less time next week then. No, that would make it more unfair. <laughs> Anyway, next week it's my game and... Well, give me 60 seconds then. No, why would I make it <laughs> easier for you? Like I say, next week it's my game and uh, just to say, or suffice to say, don't expect any easy questions. <laughs> okay. I'm so scared. Yeah, you should be. You're shaking in your boots. I'm as scared as Haley is about giving birth <laughs> <laughs> as a nice tie-in to our next topic. I thought there was a puddle under your chair. <laughs> Um, so yes, we have Haley's ongoing. She's very nearly popping now. She's got a week left. Well, she she has a almost a false alarm, but mm. before before any of that, she has a visit from uh, a social, social worker. Oh, it's called the social. I know. Well, this is when. <laughs> I mean, if stress, if I, I say she has a false alarm, I'm surprised she hasn't pushed the I baby know. out from all the shouting <laughs> she did at the beginning of the week. Yeah, social worker has been called in. Hillary Taylor. And uh, she tells Haley a few home truths and also she does. tries to build some confidence with Yeah, she's Hayley. like a relatable social worker. She's really... Rela- well, she's been in a similar situation, you see. <laughs> her mum threw, threw her out and didn't want her. And so the, the system worked for her. And that's why she wanted to be in the system because she feels like that she wants to make it work for other people the mm. same way it helped good old Hillary. So uh, Hillary is quite sympathetic to Haley, And Haley. First of all, Haley tries to go for a free house, which I think she was entitled to, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's like, I would say no if you want to throw one in. Yeah, two bedroom. I love well, it. She's got a house, so she's not entitled, no. Well, no, she's kind of. Yeah, she's not on the top of the it's list. It's overcrowded, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's true. It's an overcrowded house, so I would think she'd be quite close to the top of the list. No, don't get social involved. I'm just family. Well, no, this is exactly it. So when she <laughs> finds out, she accuses Jean of phoning the social mm. to begin with. But then, right go at her. Well, she throws fish and chips at her and all kinds of stuff. I mean, I there's she, a lovely. She does a Pauline and gets a frying pan out. Yeah. Donk. But she doesn't. No, she doesn't knock no, Jean no, on the no. head. There is a lovely scene I've just remembered um, when Jean is outside the fish and chip shop before she's bought the aforementioned meal and she uh asks Haley to call her back or not whatever's easiest for you <laughs> and then she hangs up the phone and looks all kind of like mm, what did i just say <laughs> yeah 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 which i thought was lovely i love that scene with jean and that's where jean also bumps into um arshad who is with mm. riley no harley harley mm. the baby and yes. um this is when he says that uh, right um harley's going home with her with his birth mum 
and uh, Jean kind of looks on and thinks, no, there, there's, there is hope. There is hope mm. for Hayley after all. But then when she gets home and threatened by a frying pan, <laughs> Jean is less hopeful. I know. It's re- um, strange how Hayley, like when the social worker left, I thought like she'd built some sort of bridge with her. And then Hayley's all angry again, like really quickly. Well, she hates being lied to, yeah. one, and she hates being talked about behind her back. Mm, um, that's true. And so by calling a social worker, it kind of has... She's lost any, like, trust she yeah, may have gained It's a complete package of, of so trust family. gone, yeah. But anyway, it's, as as Haley's having a go at Jean, Stacy and Mo come running in and stop the situation. Kat, who's upstairs the whole time, then decides to stroll on down <laughs> and says, oh, no, it wasn't Jean, it was me. It was me, I phoned them. Mm, she has, and, like, a smug look on her face. Yeah, and everyone's... Everyone's quite angry at Kat for this. No one's very forgiving for I'm not surprised. Kat. Yeah. I mean, Kat last week said, don't phone the police, then said, phone the police. She <laughs> then phones the social. Yeah. So Kat's going against all of her, or all the Slater morals, mm. really. It's, um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Kat at the moment. But the trouble is, underneath all this storyline, you know that Haley's done this behind Kat's back with Alfie at the same time so that's the thing yeah. and this is why in a way if she again Kat and Haley have a bit of a shouting match with one another and mm. Hayley, I love this that shouting match it yeah Haley <laughs> did you yeah. enjoy it I mean it takes something to be able to out shout Jesse Wallace mm. so Katie Jarvis has really got her <laughs> chops going for this <laughs> um ultimately she tells Kat that um the only reason she gives such a concern about her life is because she's basically got nothing else to be concerned mm. over she's lost her kids Alfie doesn't love her anymore and that really hurts Kat yeah because she brings up that Kat um has hurt one of her kid, one of her kids as well in Spain when he sh- she burnt him yes um when she was having an affair so yeah she brings that up again and that shuts Kat out quite quickly mm. even though Kat's had lots of opportunities to tell other members of the family about what Haley had said Kat chooses not to say anything which is a bit strange mm. as well, because I think if, if Kat had said, well, Haley said, th- but then I guess it, it shows Kat as being quite weak. Again, if she yeah. if she goes saying to her, you never said, because she says to Stacey, you didn't hear what she said to me. And says, well, what did she say? And she's like, and after, she wouldn't say. Yeah. yeah. After Beat's thought, she thinks, mm, no, because then that makes me sound. Yeah. Sound. Weak. She doesn't want anyone to know what's happened to that. Mm. This happened to her kid, does she? No. That it's been burnt like she was. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, Hayley decides to spend the night at the Ahmed's. Mm, she does. Nice, clean, fun house. And Masood, Not overcrowded. No. Uh, no. And Masood is quite keen for her to leave. But Miriam is more keen to kind of see, you know, what she's like around Harley. And she, she says to Kat, who visits her, um, Hayley, with the intention of apologising, that actually Hayley is um, a natural at being a mother. and She's really good. Mm, yeah, because um, Kat's like in the background looking, waiting to apologise and... Haley's like being a really good mum and so she like turns around and leaves <laughs> like yeah um. we also learned um, um on this episode that big mo fancies Masood. i know yeah i enjoyed that she, she wouldn't said, say no well no she she wouldn't mind waking up next to him <laughs> so there we go so they're gonna be a love triangle between big mo kathy and masoud well i mean kathy snubbed him so why not why not give <laughs> big mo a chance yeah. i mean watching big mo eat that egg sandwich later <laughs> in the week was hot i mean I, I I certainly had a had to throw a wet towel over my uh, <laughs> over myself just to cool myself down watching her drip that yolk down her hand. Well, everyone's got a type, I guess. Yeah, yeah, everyone's different, each to their own. <laughs> but um, yeah, I enjoyed that. Big Mo's one-liners throughout the week have just been enjoyable for me because that's all she gets. But that's fine. That's enough for now. Um, and we also have one of the characters from a few months ago return. Chloe comes back as a guest appearance, which is exciting. Oh, I'm I glad guess. you remembered her name because I, I've left a gap because I couldn't remember yeah, her name. Chloe. Chloe. That's it. Um, so she's back to take her baby back because she's clean now. And her and Haley seem to be like quite similar, but also hate each other, but also like have the same sort of level of. Yes. Yeah. They They're leave... on the same level, aren't they? They are. That you can tell that that's what the writers want you to see. You want to see them to almost see each other as. Yeah. A now mirror. I'm hoping John York planned this from all those months ago, right up till now. He planned the reason why this character Chloe was here was to talk to Haley. Now, months later, it would be nice if that had, had not just been a happy coincidence, yeah. wouldn't it? Haley and Chloe have the same concerns about looking after the baby um, and the conflict about whether they're going to be good mothers or not, mm. um, as you say. And so if, if, if it had been planned the whole time, then it's a nice little, yeah. nice little link together. I'm shocked. But don't be shocked. Be Shook. impressed. 
shook. <laughs> he shook. I'll tell you what shook me this week, that we found out that um, Miriam is quite the prankster. I know, she loves her pranks. Two pranks this week. She uh, gave Hayley um, some chai tea, <laughs> which, um, again, Hayley drank twice because the second time she forgot that it was chai tea and then drank it again and, like, <laughs> and then kind of stopped drinking it. And then later on, she told uh, Chloe that she was giving her a copy of the Quran mm. and she highlighted the best bits of... Only jokes. Every bit, yeah, lols. <laughs> Bants. Yeah, a bit well, of Shane lol. Joyce died. They could have been good friends. Their pranks and her little treasure hunts. They would have been a right team. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they could have worked together and made um, <laughs> made a, like the square a whole new happier place to live. Yeah, I do enjoy Miriam. I'm glad she's back. I like all of them actually. Mm, and yeah. uh, as I Pardon said, Masood. Well, Masood. I like yeah. Masood in the unit. I like Masood as when they when he's with the uncle and the auntie. Mm. As I said in the extra episode, that I would like them to grow the uh, Ahmeds out a little bit more. Mm. I'd like them to at least one more character, or maybe adopt. I just they only adopt babies, don't they? Yeah, it's shame they didn't drop like a seventeen-year-old. Not a seventeen-year-old. Well, no, like a like a thirteen-year-old. Someone yeah. a playmate for Dennis. But a good actor, of course. But yeah, someone someone that they can kind of encourage a new younger generation because they need to bring in the youth. They do. Someone for Denny. I mean, Haley's bringing in a new youthful character <laughs> when she uh, has her baby. She is. I mean, she decides to move back in after her talk with Chloe, and she gets a um good luck stone given to her wherever they are but it's, it's, it was given to chloe by yeah. by ashad and she doesn't need it anymore but she doesn't need it anymore she doesn't need it yeah <laughs> she's confident that she can look after harley and cat basically doesn't ask for forgiveness she just says i don't mind you living here but just stay out of my way mm. so yeah so they're still yeah touchy touchy subject yeah, not a good situation to be in so Haley has like a fake going into labor as well when she's moved back in <laughs> i thought you said she had a fake labia <laughs> sorry what what did you just call me <laughs> <laughs> no she thinks she's going into labor but she's not once she's moved back into slater so they all get panicked and apparently gene has phoned alfie yeah. thinking that the baby's going to be born the baby's coming alfie didn't answer to gene's own defense mm. alfie didn't answer but alfie then tries to phone gene back and that's where Haley discovers when she's coming back from the hospital that Jean had phoned her, and so again the trust between Jean and Haley has been oh no. broken. God, Jean. She's once awful. More. That's Jean's like downfall is trying to keep a secret. I know, <laughs> and but she's it... keeping the biggest secret at the moment. Yeah, Haley even says that because Jean said, "I promise not to tell anyone about you and Alfie being Alfie's baby," and she, and Haley says, "Well, you promised not to phone Alfie, and yeah, you have." You did. So to apologise, Jean buys Haley a new cot because Haley needs a cot. Mm. For the baby once it eventually yes. comes out of her. And Hayley can't afford it herself. She can't. I want to say that also the next reference for the week is that Gary Hobbs was referenced oh, when they you... wanted to name the baby. You weren't meant to tell me. You could have just dropped I that in. Keep it. <laughs> it's the anticipation was too Because um, they were all saying, what are you going to name him? What about Stacey or Jean or Big Mo? <laughs> 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 Maureen. Maureen. Um, and then they say, what about Gary? Yeah. And then, um, yeah, Hayley says, oh, yeah, I met him once. He was a right waste of space yeah so yeah i like that i'd like to know when she met him because he was on the square for a long time at a funeral and or a wedding yeah but the slaters didn't associate themselves with the That's bad true. side of the family did they she so. might have bumped into lynn these past 12 years <laughs> <laughs> so she might have bumped into lynn in the 12 years that she's been missing who knows who knows um and at the end of Haley's sort of storyline she was in the taxi sort of stroking her belly and she said like quite a cryptic thing yes. she saw everyone going about their day fill me in <laughs> Haley says to the bump i won't be living with them but you won't be living with me mm. so is she going what's she gonna do i don't know if she is chloe giving her the idea to put up for adoption <laughs> for the first year it's like <laughs> but yeah but also is adoption or is, is the care going to be closer to home do you think that Haley is planning to give the baby to cat because jean well, yeah, but Cat makes perfect sense because through the whole week, all everyone's been saying to Haley is the reason she's so angry and upset is she shouldn't be taken out on you, but she misses her children. But technically, it's Alfie's baby, so could Haley, in her mind, think, well, this could be looked after by Cat? Cat's second chance, Cat's fourth chance. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's a weird thing. It sort of mm. seems because all week Haley was becoming more and more keen on the idea. Of being a mum. And then she says this. So, yeah, it's very odd. I don't quite know what... I mean, Haley goes up and down like a, oh, yeah, that's true. a, a stock exchange graph. She's 
constantly changing her mind of whether she wants to bathe or not. Drinking while she's making a decision. So she's not doing the best role. <laughs> no drinking ever. this week, though. So it's no, good. she was clean. She was very pleased. Yeah, I'm not sure what that could mean, really. Mm. I, I think, I well, I hope she doesn't abandon it at the hospital and just be gone. Mm. Um, but I, I would, I don't know. I, I would think that it... Maybe she'll, she'll give it to Miriam and Ashad <laughs> well, that's, to yeah, look after. Yeah, but I don't think she'd want to give it to... Okay, Miriam Ashad are, mm. uh, people she knows. You're not allowed knows. to choose anyway. But also, I don't think she'd want to give it to a complete stranger. I think she'd want to give the baby to... Keep it in the Slaters. Yeah, exactly. Keep it in the Slaters. And the Slaters want to keep it in the Slaters. It's all about yeah. family, as we always that's say, true. every week. So we shall see. But um, yeah. I don't want to say goodbye to Haley though. I want to continue oh Haley will be back yeah and she'll come back with a scream and a shout yeah i mean it's halloween week next week it is something to look forward exciting. to exciting yeah fancy seen... dress and a birth just a quick honorable mention of Ooh. a story there was a one scene a very like, the tiniest morsel of a story and that was mel and ray who mm. flirted at the cafe and ian watched on mm. and continued his adventures into getting Mel's affections back. I oh, know, such a drip. I mean, well, it is a drip, but they're keeping that story alive. Even though I, they... I was all hyped for that when she had her knife and she was in a sexy red dress and being all evil, mm. and then she disappeared. Well, she's obviously... Yeah, but there's also the story of Ian wanting to still get yeah. Mel's affections. So I think something's going to happen along those lines. Um, perhaps, <laughs> I don't know if this would work, but perhaps Mel would use Ian... As a way of getting to Ray, but we shall see. Yeah, she we shall might. see. She but, used him once. She'll use him again. Hmm. But she did say that she likes her coffee strong and Irish. So <laughs> something to bear in mind there, Ian. Don't we all? Yeah. If you because when you wake up at nine o'clock in the morning, the first thing you want is a shot of whiskey in your coffee. <laughs> uh, a little story at the end. Well, at the beginning of the week that was mm. for everyone to keep us digest. excited. Yes, keep us on our toes. Something else to keep us on our toes is the poll of the week that we always post at the beginning of the week when EastEnders is broadcast on a Monday in the UK. Um, you can always find it on our Twitter, which is at EastEnders Week. This week we said we haven't seen Mick lately. So what do you think he has been up to in prison? <laughs> and the four options were starting a choir, studying law to get himself out, continuing the path to top dog, or writing his memoirs. Thank you to everyone who voted. As usual, it's been a really popular vote. Can you guess number one? Starting a choir. No, sadly <laughs> not. So last place was writing his memoirs at 19%. Oh. Starting a choir and studying law with joint second Ooh. at 22%. So continuing his path to top dog seems the popular one at 38%. Makes sense. The um, sensible answer. It is the sensible answer and probably the one that's most likely, as I always say, is the most likely to be the one. Quick say thank you to uh the patrick truman twitter account for his reply um i won't say it on the show uh but suffice to say i had a bet on that you would say that <laughs> or someone would so thank you very much you won me five pounds very as a character of a patrick i mm. feel but um he won me five pounds so i was quite pleased with that however at huffle puff lock said being moved to a prison 300 miles away and making plans to move the Carters nearer to his new location, hopefully. So clearly not a fan of the Carters no, there. Oh um, but um, as I say, follow us on Twitter at EastEnders Week. We're on Instagram at EastEnders Weekly Podcast. You can email us with any of your questions, suggestions of shows, any game ideas, EastEndersWeekly at gmail.com. And you can find us on Facebook groups and pages just by searching EastEnders Weekly Podcast. As we always say, we love getting your emails and your messages. And you can find us tweeting live every week whilst these senders are broadcast in the uk so there we go that's another week wrapped up nicely ready for a bit of halloween mm. so um ben i just want you to have a quick look out the window can you see something um something familiar <laughs> yeah there's a 50 foot photo of my face 